Hey what's up Vinayak here, welcome to part 2 of my video on how to connect Simulink and MATLAB to a joystick. I had made part 1 back in 2016 but it's been a long time and most of you are new to my channel since then. So I thought I would make this updated video on how to model an actuator in part 2. So the joystick that I use is the Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. It's very good, it's one of the best ones in the market. I put the links here so you can see where you can buy it from in your country. It's a very popular one, it's sold like almost everywhere I think. Uh, one thing I like about this joystick is that it does have a USB connection. In my opinion, it is not very good to use a wireless joystick because you know, they don't last very long and if something happens to the receiver, you won't be able to use it again. With the USB joystick, the good thing is that they last longer because they have the wired connection. So I would, you know, personally recommend that. So, this video is about actuators. So what is an actuator, right? An actuator is something used in any engineering device like a car, a robot, for example. It is something that is used to move something else. A best example is a spoiler on an airplane. When the spoiler deploys, you have the actuator which pushes it up. So actuators are used everywhere in, in engineering and they're very important to understand well. And this video will be focusing on how, how you can actually model an actuator accurately by using a joystick. You have many mathematical components to it the first thing you have is a command saturation so that is simply how much can the actuator move so like its value so for example if a robotic arm can move between negative two meters and two meters with in relation to its zero position then that would be its command saturation right next you have a rate saturation so that is saying how fast it can move each second the faster it moves the better but sometimes you don't want it to move too fast because that can cause damage. So that is expressed in like either in degrees per second or in meters per second, for example. And then last have a gain. So the gain is the input to output relation. Actuators are typically modeled as a first order lag. So what this is saying is that if the input to the actuator is called U and the output is called Delta, the value of Delta will initially not be the same as the value for U. It will lag a bit. So if u is up there then delta will be approaching it only after a few moments will delta be equal to u and that's when you have the full output of the actuator so this is very important because in real life systems this is how they normally do it you actually don't want delta and u to be the same because you don't want it to respond too fast so this lag lets you achieve a bit of a delay and it also lets the system stabilize better so a first order lag is very important one thing you should know about a first order lag is that you will always have a zero error because if you take the transfer function if the if you have the actuator gain of some value k for example a variable if you do k over s plus k and if you and as per the control law of the final value principle s equals zero then you have k over k that's equal to one so that means the ratio between the input and the output is one so when time goes to infinity in actuators, you also have something called a dead zone. So a dead zone is basically if the U command of or the manual command is between some small value, you will not have any response from the actuator. And this is more of a safety mechanism built in. Next, you can also have a time delay. So if you apply the input U, only after a few seconds will delta response. So this is this can be useful, especially in, in, in the nuclear industry or in chemical engineering where you don't want things to respond immediately after you press something you want there to be a delay so let's say for example you, you press the wrong button and you know like something blows up you know you can always press cancel so that's when you have a very useful tool for time delay so we'll be modeling it in Simulink and let's begin so for our example we'll be controlling an aileron an elevator and rudder along with the speed for the aileron, we have a command saturation of 21.5 degrees, the elevator 25 degrees, and the rudder 30 degrees. The gains are the same for all of them except the speed at 20.2. For the rate saturation, we have aileron is 80, elevator is 60, and rudder is the fastest at 120. So that means the rudder moves at the fastest speed. Let's go into Simulink and drag in all our blocks scope saturation integrator mux and gain 
then let's start arranging it but first we can reconfigure the scope just disable all the last 5000 data points so we can show it always and then just change the line properties here so let's drag in we have a step a saturation a sum block a gain that is the actuator gain we can put 20.2 in there we are doing the aileron now for information so we can use that put the integrator and then we can also type command and rate saturation there so we have our system it's, that's it it's super easy that's your entire actuator i didn't put any time delay but you, you can just add a time delay after the step if you want to for a few seconds so let's put in the numerical values there for 21.5 and then also for the rate saturation at 80 degrees and when you press play it should run So let's take a look at our graph. We have the following. It does respond very quickly because the rate saturation is very high. And also we have a good gain value. So within 0.25 seconds, it does respond. So that's very good news. You can see if we change the gain value to something smaller, then the response time is slower. So it takes about longer by a factor of four. And if we also change the, the rate saturation, slower then we can also see a much more response time so you can configure this based on your actuators and what you you need so that's an example of how to make it in matlab and simulink for the joystick inputs here i pre pretty much did what i did in part one i used the joystick input block so make sure you watch part one if you are unfamiliar with it for the buttons i added a display block here so I can see what buttons I can use and here, here I have the selector block which you can find in the, in the library. I selected roll pitch yaw and speed from an 8 input port and for the ailerons I did essentially the same thing and for the speed I just offset the values a bit now this will be based on what you have so just to configure it yourself with the joystick that you have. For the ailerons I'm um, just connected there. And now we can take a look at how the joystick performs. But first, um, that's the model. It's the exact same as what I had before. So, yeah. Video. Let's take a look at what we have. So I'm controlling my joystick and I'm showing you the output there. So first we have the ailerons. So you can see how it goes up to 1 and negative 1. Next we have the elevator. The same idea, it goes from negative 1 to 1 and 0 is the middle so it's not moving there. Same thing with the u-axis as well. And for the speed, you can see how it goes up to 1 and negative 1. Next, for, for the buttons, I just put this here. Now, this will be based on the joystick you have. You may have different buttons than me. So, just see which ones work for you. And you can also do, do some interesting stuff with this. So, in the future, I'll be making more videos with joystick input stuff. So, make sure you stay tuned for that. So, this was a video on joysticks part 2. As you can see, I covered a bit more features from part one and part one talks about how you can actually connect it. So make sure you watch that if you don't have any idea on how the joystick input works. So with that being said, thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something new and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good day. Bye.